Ramunat Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada. Now, Mr. Mahabharata, 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 Friends, I go ho, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadar, Shosri Gaur, Bhakti Vedi Jai, Sri Sri Radha Krishna, Vobha Gopita Shama Pandurada Kuddha Giri Govardhan Ki Jai, Sri Vandava Dham Ki Jai, Navadab Dham Ki Jai, Gaung Jumano Tulasi Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Ananda Koti Vaishnava Vrindhi Ki Jai, Samavetta Bhakti Vrindhi Ki Jai, Go Premanandi, All Glories to Some of the Bodies, All Glories to Some of the Bodies, All Glories to Some of the Bodies, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Guranga, all glories to Sri Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Vrishtaya Buddha De Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Saraswata Deve Gauravani Pracharane Nirvasesha Shunyavadi Pasha Tadesha Tadane Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasadi Gaurabhak Tarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Reading from Shema Bhav Kano 10, Chapter 85, Verse 44. Idam itam iti prayas. Idam itam iti prayas. Tava yogesh varesh vara. Tava yogesh varesh vara. Navidantya api yogesha. Yoga mayam kuto vayam. Idam, this, it, um, characterized like this, iti, in such terms, prayaha, for the most part, tava, your, yogishvara, of the masters of yoga, ishvara, O Supreme Master, na avedanti, they do not know. Api, even Yogisha, masters of yoga, uh, Yoga Mayam, your spiritual power of delusion, Kuta, what then of Vayam, of us? Uh, translation What to speak of ourselves, O Lord of all perfect yogis? Even the greatest mystics do not know 
what your spiritual power of delusion is or how it acts. Purport. Systematic understanding of something should include knowledge of both its sarup, or essential identity, and also its visheshas, the attributes that make it different from other things. Maya. The energy underlying all material existence is more subtle than ordinary phenomena. Only God and his liberated devotees therefore can know its sarup and vishesha. Please be merciful to me so I may get out of the blind well of family life, my false home, and find the true shelter of your lotus feet, which selfless sages always seek. Then, either alone or in the company of great saints who are the friends of everyone, I may wander freely, finding life's necessities at the feet of the universally charitable trees. Hmm. Purport to the Vishnu Chakravarti states that in response to Bali's prayers, Sri Krishna invited him to choose some benediction, and in this verse, Bali submits his request. Bali begs to be relieved of the entanglement of material life so he will be free to leave home and wander in the wilderness with only the Lord's lotus feet as his shelter. For his subsistence, Bali proposes he will take kelp from the forest trees at whose feet are fruits to eat and leaves to sleep on for all of us as needed, uh, for all to, all to use as needed. And if the Lord is especially merciful to him, Bali hopes, he will not have to wander alone, but will be allowed to travel in the company of the Lord Krishna's devotees. O Lord of all subordinate creatures, please tell us what to do and thus free us of all sin. One who faithfully executes your command, O Master, is no longer obliged to follow the ordinary Vedic rituals. Purport, the Acharyas explain Bali's thoughts as follows. Reflecting on the possibility that his request for immediate deliverance may have been too bold, Bali Maharaj considers that first he will need to become sufficiently purified. In any case, he thinks, Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram must have come to him for some specific purpose uh, if he can receive the Lord's order and carry it out. Uh, that will be his best opportunity for purification. Indeed, as Bali states, a devotee acting under the personality of God is instruction need no longer follow the sacrificial injunctions and prohibitions of the Vedas. So this is the speech of Ambali uh, as a uh, greeting to uh, Krishna and Balaram appearing. And as he's speaking, he doesn't actually know why they've come, what the request is. Uh, uh, in any case, he is very pleased uh, to meet them. So Bali has been given a particular benediction of living on a lower planetary system. Uh, but being in the company of the Lord who acts as his uh, gatekeeper. Uh, so Vamana Dev is with him as a gatekeeper, not all the time, but sometimes he comes there. Uh, and he's uh, put on a lower planetary system because actually he belonged to a demoniac family, so therefore he should be in that place. And we see even Prahlad is down there, <laughs> Asutla Loka. Uh, however, it's not actually a, such a bad place for them because uh, uh, they uh, are, are devotees of the Lord and they tolerate all sorts of things in existence, but nevertheless he lives like a king down there, so he has no material problems. Of course, the people there are of lower mentality in general, but apart from that, he has the company of the Supreme Lord and some other devotees there. Uh, so he's been given a special blessing by the Supreme Lord uh, for his uh, surrender to the Lord. Uh, so he's always welcome to see the Lord. Uh, so here he sees the Lord in a, a very particular form, that of Krishna, uh, which is very rare. Uh, uh, Krishna doesn't appear in uh, 
all the time and once in a day of Brahma. So it's a very good uh, opportunity to see Krishna and of course Balaram. So he takes this opportunity to praise them. Yeah. So though he is uh, considered to be a great devotee and favored by the Lord, on his part, he feels uh, not very satisfied in one sense uh, uh, because uh, even though he's been given a place by the Lord and the Lord is there as his gatekeeper, which shows that he, uh, the Lord is under his control, uh, uh, he is always dissatisfied because that's not the perfect position. He's still in the material world uh, and uh, ruling over a hellish planet of all things. and. Uh, Though the Lord is supposed to be there, he's not there all the time, as Vamanadeva also. So this is not a very uh, praiseworthy position from his point of view. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he uh, laments his position in one sense, that uh, uh, not because he's ungrateful, but because uh, he feels himself not a perfect devotee, so therefore he cannot associate with the Lord in the proper way at all times. Huh? Uh, so this is, of course, a, a feeling of the devotee that he always feels unqualified, and uh, therefore uh, uh, this acts as some sort of qualification for the devotee. Uh, so he feels unqualified in his particular position. So we see here how he's aspiring to be a better devotee and to, uh, he's saying, I should wander about like, you know, a, a beggar and uh, sleep under the trees, etc. So he's indicating that he has material attachments and he has to become uh, purified. Uh, and that he's, uh, as he says, he's in the blind well of material life, household life, etc. So he considers himself a fallen soul and he needs some purification uh, uh, in order to advance. Huh? On the other hand, we see that uh, uh, from our perspective, he's considered to be a great devotee and he's an example of Atmanavedana, uh, offering everything to the Supreme Lord. And we see how the Lord has given him specific blessings. So, uh, nevertheless, Bali Maharaj feels uh, very unqualified uh, as a devotee, and he's always aspiring for uh, more intimate association with the Lord. So, uh, that is why he expresses himself in this way in these uh, verses. Uh, uh, and he also expresses the fact that. Uh, this verse points out that no one can understand the Lord's intentions. Uh, so he also indicates, hints got rather by this, that uh, I can also not understand why you put me in Sutta Laloka of all places, <laughs> in this particular place like this, whatever. Huh? Uh, and uh, uh, I'm also from a demon family, so why are you showing me such great favor, etc. Out of humility, he'll say things like this. Uh, so, and then and particularly in this case, why have Krishna and Balaram come here? We don't, I don't know. It's very difficult to figure out the uh, desire of the Supreme Lord. From Krishna's point of view, of course, he's merely fulfilling the desire of his mother. Devaki, who requested that she wanted her sons back. So, uh, uh, for Krishna, it's not uh, it's not an issue at all. He's uh, uh, just fulfilling the desire of his mother. But for uh, Bali Maharaj, he doesn't really understand why the Lord has come to his particular place. Uh, uh, so, therefore, he says that no one can really understand your intentions, even the great sages, uh, what to speak of uh, a person like Bali. Uh, so, uh, his words, of course, are quite uh, eloquent, expressing at once the nature of the Supreme Lord. He has an understanding of the um, how the Lord acts according to his own will, and we cannot really understand that. And he's beyond uh, everything in the material world. He has a supreme position, etc. And... Uh, uh, He's unaffected by anything in the material world. Uh, uh, so uh, he expresses how he uh, uh, 
uh, good appreciation of the Supreme Lord. Uh, so uh, he also asks, what can we do to become better devotees? Uh, how can we uh, please you best? Uh, and of course, uh, then he answers that one who follows your order, he is the best person. Uh, he is the one who can uh, advance the best. He doesn't, he's no more longer obligated to follow the Vedic rituals and uh, whatever. So uh, simply following your order is the way in which we can please the Lord the most. Huh? And this hints at the fact that he wants to ask why the Lord has come there. So uh, how can he serve the Lord? Uh, if the Lord appears in Sutla Loka, he must have some purpose. So, uh, Bhadi Maharaj hopes to uh, help the Lord fulfill his purpose. So, um, he expresses his eagerness to do anything for the Supreme Lord within his uh, capacity. Uh, so, uh, following the order of the Lord or the desire of the Lord is just another way of saying uh, what is most pleasing to the Supreme Lord. So the Lord may express that in terms of a, a particular uh, request. Uh, in this case, uh, please return the sons of uh, Devaki, like that. Uh, uh, so, uh, that, uh, and if one does that, that is pleasing to the Lord. So we have particular uh, instances at a particular time in which particular things will please the Lord uh, at a certain occasion. Uh, perhaps he wants to eat, so therefore we feed him at that time, uh, or he wants to go to the forest or whatever. So he has particular desires at certain times. And uh, uh, he may express that to the devotees, and the devotees try to please him by making proper arrangements for that. Uh, so that's one way in which we can uh, please the Supreme Lord. Uh, particular, according to his particular desire. Uh, the other way, of course, is in general. Uh, we know uh, that the Lord uh, is pleased with the devotion of a devotee. Uh, so, no matter how it's expressed, uh, the Lord becomes very pleased with that devotion. Uh, and, and thus, it is uh, completely apart from other considerations. Uh, so, uh, if, if there's great devotion to the Lord, the Lord is very pleased. Hmm. So we see, for instance, in the Ras Lila, when uh, they heard the flute, all the gopis immediately left their houses and came to Krishna without considering anything about the family and the duty to the husbands or the parents or whatever. Huh? Uh, so they came to Krishna because uh, Krishna called them. So their coming was uh, a response to his call, and uh, therefore they pleased him. He was very pleased that they had come, in spite of all the obstacles. Uh, so, uh, because he was pleased, then uh, they were very, very happy. Uh, so, uh, according to the instance, uh, Krishna may have particular desires, and then uh, we please him in that way. But then the general uh, idea is that uh, we just simply express uh, our devotion to the Lord in any way possible and then uh, he is pleased with that uh, so he may not make particular requests at all uh, but the general principle is that uh, we we seek to somehow uh, serve him in a very proper way with devotion and that is pleasing to the Lord uh, so therefore it doesn't really matter uh, what is offered, so whether it's a leaf or fruit or flower or whatever. Hmm? If the devotion is there, then uh, Krishna is satisfied. Huh? Hmm. This is, of course, particularly for our uh, activities in uh, sadhana bhakti. Hmm? We don't get direct instructions from the Lord. So how do we please the Lord? Uh, so we have the general instruction, we act with devotion and we offer all sorts of things to the Lord. Huh? This becomes more regulated in deity worship, where we offer certain things at certain times, like we offer the boga at certain times, or we offer incense and flowers at certain times. Huh? Huh? So that's all according to uh, rule. Uh, certain times we offer. 
But the important element there is the devotion. Now, that is what is pleasing to the Lord. Uh, uh, why does Krishna need a flower? Why does he need anything? Huh? Uh, but he's interested in the devotion. Uh, so the offering of the flower is an only a way of expressing that devotion. That's all. Huh? So as long as we're in the material world, we have to use a material body and we use material objects. That's some sort of imperfection in one sense because in the spiritual world, there is no material objects at all. Uh, but here we have material objects, etc. So we and we have a material body, so we use these in sadhana to uh, please the Lord. And it's not perfect because they're material. Material body and material objects, not perfect. Better to have spiritual body and spiritual objects, obviously, which are eternal and full of uh, purity and uh, spiritual potency. Here our material body is just dull matter. Uh, and the object is just destructible matter again. So how is that pleasing to the Lord? <laughs> Nevertheless, as part of sadhana bhakti, the Lord accepts it by his mercy. Hmm? But he only accepts it because of the devotion. Right. So in the beginning we have a little devotion and then we go through different stages up to Nishtha and Ruchi. In fact, we get more and more devotion. But nevertheless, that has to be there in that whole process to make it work properly. Uh, but uh, so uh, uh, th this is what is pleasing to the Lord and this makes the effort of offering something successful that devotion right. so uh, it's a practice uh, and it becomes uh, let's say perfect uh, when we uh, achieve prema and it's almost perfect when we attain Bhava. Uh, so in Bhava stage itself, the the uh, the Shakti of the Lord actually manifests in a very pure way, as Slani and some of its Shaktis that manifest in Bhava itself. Uh, so that that Bhava is the devotion. Uh, but we have devotion for the Lord in a certain mode, as a, a servant or as a friend or as a parent, etc. Huh? Uh, so that devotion uh, takes a particular form with Krishna and uh, is composed of the Sladini and Samvit Shaktis. Uh, before that, it's not really differentiated as Sladi and Samvit, so it's very general. And uh, the more uh, neophyte we are, the more it's covered over by our material desires, etc. But still, there has to be some devotion there, a little bit of devotion. Hmm? So, we get the seed of bhakti and then the bhakti begins to develop as we go through the different stages. Huh? So the devotion is a constant factor there. Huh? From the seed, to the leaves, to the flower, and to the fruit. Huh? All, uh, devotion is continuous throughout all those processes. Huh? Uh, so, uh, uh, by doing that, then we please the Supreme Lord. Huh? And then we get uh, increase by that. Because the Lord is pleased, then we advance in devotion. So uh, even though we don't get direct instruction from the Supreme Lord at this time, uh, we follow the general principle of trying to offer with devotion and the Lord is pleased with that. Uh, once we attain spiritual body in the spiritual world and we enter in the spiritual world, we have spiritual time operating and all the actions are spiritual, the body is spiritual, the senses are spiritual, the objects are spiritual. Uh, then, of course, uh, uh, we act according to the particular desires of the Lord uh, in pastimes. Uh, so we serve the Lord within pastimes, and in those pastimes, the Lord has particular desires at particular times, and then we try to please Him uh, according to those desires. Hmm? Uh, and it's always changing because uh, the pastimes keep changing. Uh, nevertheless, uh, in any case, even there, the, the attempt is to try to please Krishna. Uh, and with uh, no expectation for ourself. Uh, uh, so, uh, Bali also realizes that and therefore he is saying, what can we, what type of order we can follow? 
because he has the good fortune of the Supreme Lord himself personally appearing at this time, and he must have come for some purpose. So if uh, the Lord tells his purpose, then Bali hopes he can serve and please the Lord in that way. And so this is a particular uh, request that the Lord will make, and then he can uh, serve the Lord in that particular way. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, please him by a particular activity. Huh? So that, of course, is within the pastimes of the Lord when one directly interacts with the Supreme Lord. Huh? Uh, however, we don't do that in sadhana. We cannot directly approach the Lord, so therefore we just take the general principle of uh, regularly uh, offering things with devotion to the Supreme Lord. And through that, eventually we reach the stage of meeting the Lord and then responding to his particular desires. When it is difficult to understand uh, the other person's mind, uh, it becomes very difficult to serve or surrender to them. How do we, when we are not able to understand, uh, here it said that uh, it is difficult to understand what is Krishna's mind there. Mm -hmm. So it becomes difficult for one to serve him or uh, Well, him. We, we can't know everything about the Supreme Lord because he is infinite in his desires and whatever. And uh, uh, everything in the spiritual world ultimately is unlimited and we cannot hope to encompass everything with our understanding, even our spiritual understanding because we are jivas and we have a limitation. Uh, uh, so therefore it's natural that no one can really understand the Supreme Lord. But there are certain principles we act on uh, which are very understandable and that is the devotion. So we know that the Lord is pleased by our devotion. So that much we know. Uh, in a particular situation, how he will respond, we don't know. Uh, uh, we do our service, we don't know how he's going to respond, but uh, to the best of our ability, we uh, do this with affection and offer to the Lord, and uh, he should be pleased with that. Hmm. In the particular pastimes of the Lord, sometimes it may not look like he is pleased or whatever, but that is only a part of the pastimes. So that is why the devotees are somewhat puzzled sometimes. Uh, is the Lord pleased by this action? No, I don't know. Uh, uh, but that is part of the pastimes. In terms of sadhana bhakti, of course, we simply act with as much devotion as we can and uh, the Lord responds to that. But of course, we don't know uh, because we don't see the Lord directly, so we don't know his immediate response or whatever. Uh, but even in the spiritual world where the, the devotees cannot understand the intention of the Lord, as long as they act with devotion, ultimately, they're successful. So they don't have to really worry about uh, what happens uh, as immediate response of the Supreme Lord and how to understand his mind and because they know that they can never understand it completely. Krishna Balaram went to Chutala Loka and at the same time what about that uh, Vamana Dev? He was there? Oh, it's not mentioned here because as I said sometimes he's there and sometimes he's not there so in particular cases he's not there but he seems he's not there all the time. So in Brihad Bhagavatamrita, then he complains uh, to Narada Muni, actually, uh, the Lord looks like he's not here all the time. He some, sometimes comes and kills a demon or this or that or whatever helps me, but he's not there constantly. So therefore, Bali Maharaj laments that I'm not very fortunate because I don't have the constant association of the Lord. <laughs> 